Hi guys, Mycrew here. This is my video about tips and tricks within RuneScape. This is number 10 and I've made a bunch of other tips and tricks videos in the past. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description if you haven't seen them. There is some very, very nice tips in there and I'm going to cover some new ones in this. So let's get right into it. The first tip is absolutely amazing. I was so shocked when I found this out. If you go to the bottom right of your bank, you can actually take a look at your metal storage from your bank. You don't have to go to any of the storage to see what you've got in there. To use or take out any of those items, you have to go, but you can see it from your bank. And another even cooler one, in my opinion, with mining and smithing, is they added it to the ore box as well. You can right-click your ore box when you're out and about mining, and you can check your metal bank. This is amazing, especially if you're using porters, because you can see how much you have in your metal bank, because otherwise you wouldn't really be able to see unless you tracked your porter charges. Now you can see it directly while mining, and then, you know, if you don't have enough, you just go back to mining, or if you have enough, you're done. You don't have to worry about leaving and coming back and not having enough. Another tip is with the brooch of the gods. The way that this works is you can store urns inside it and now also those effigies you get from the effigy incubator D&D right here, this one in, you know, Carapax lab, these can also now be stored into it as well. As you can see, I have all of them stored in there, but they actually added something else other than just the effigies being able to be stored in there with the urns. They added a withdraw feature. So you can withdraw the urns, you can withdraw the effigies at any time because sometimes you may want to use the big book or something and have the urns in your inventory, but you obviously can't use the brooch and the big book at the same time. So that pocket slot being contested means that you may want to take the urns or effigies out at times. And now they've allowed you to do that. A very, very good piece of quality of life. The next tip is a bit more of a simple one, but one that is very, very helpful for your friends or someone you want to help get into PVM. If you go to the little cog on the right of your ability bar, there is a share action bar button. You can share that with anyone on your friends list and it will give them the bar. It obviously doesn't give them abilities they don't have unlocked, but it's super helpful to share a decent Revo++ bar with your friends easily and quickly or something like that. Another tip is reattuning your max skilled garden portals for your Grace of the Elves. I think I've commented on this before. I currently run the Deep Sea Fishing Hub as it's a very easy bank. It's good for the merchant and it's good for clue scrolls. And then Overgrown Idols, which is really close to a glider for clues as well. But you can reattune it to so many different things. And one of the new things they added was Ranch Out of Time Dinosaur Farm, which is really, really helpful because it's kind of annoying to get to otherwise. And it saves a lot of time and effort being on your Grace of the Elves or even just in a Max Guild Garden Portal if you don't have a Grace of the Elves. I spoke about this tip in another episode where Scrimshaws could go up to 24 hours of charges now and they've done the same thing for god books and that incorporates every single book so it works with the god wars dungeon 3 books like the when one here it goes with the Elvestor grimoire it goes with illuminated god books it goes with everything so as you can see i have a bunch of charges on the books in my inventory now and i don't have to worry about going back to the bank or bringing pages with me to recharge them all the time i can have them last up to 24 hours Jagex made Extreme Potions tradable, which then allows you to buy an overload pack from the Jiggy to get all of the extremes you need to actually make the overloads. Alongside the Torstals, so it's a pack for literally everything in an overload, which is really, really helpful. You would have had to have bought all of the extremes separately, like, you know, scrolling down the list and all of that, but instead you can just buy this one item and save yourself a lot of hassle. There was one setting that was changed fairly recently, and that is the one in your combat and action bar and targeting settings, which is called target scenery with targeted movement abilities. That sounds weird, but all it means is that when I use something like dive or bladed dive, especially during clue scrolls, I'm going to be able to interact with everything around me, including trees, including all of the annoying stuff that you don't want to click. And if you click them, well, it just runs over to it and kind of does nothing. So if you toggle this off, if it is on, it was on for default for me for some reason. That means that you can't target any of these trees, as you can see here. Nothing is targetable, which means you can clearly click the ground wherever you need to and surge and dive and everything you need to do to get your clues done. 
it helps so so much i would always turn this off another thing that was added recently which is amazing is that your auras do not deplete when you're lobbied so as you can see my aura is here at 22 minutes if i exit to the lobby say i'm in the middle of an hour of pvm or something and i want my aura to last i can go to the bathroom come back log back in and it will still be 22 minutes. This means you don't waste your aura and you don't really feel forced to do in a whole hour of something if you need to go do saying after half an hour you can go do it, come back and continue. Really, really amazing. Another cool change that JX have done is allowed strike worms to be killed off task, which means you can kill the desert strike worms, the jungle ones, the ice ones. The reason why this is a good tip is if you're an Iron Man, they drop the hex crest and focus sight from the desert and the jungle strike worms. These do have rarer drop chances off task, but getting tasks with these monsters can be very, very annoying. So just camping them and then upgrading your Slayer helmet and stuff should be a really, really good way to do it. And now that they can be killed off task it's definitely recommended in my opinion the next tip is to do with vuln bombs and any other type of thrown bombs that can be utilized on your ability bar when you put it on your ability bar and press default when you press the keybind it throws a vuln bomb at your target if you wanted to change this you could then keybind it and do target that way it would do it on your mouse click I personally have it keybound to target so I can throw it wherever I want before even attacking the monster and also be able to use it during transitions and stuff like that ready for the next phase. But in addition to that I can still throw a Vuln Bomb at a targeted enemy by just clicking it in my inventory. A lot of people don't realize that if you click the Vuln Bomb in your inventory it does the default and throws it at your target so that is super useful as well. So having both at your disposal is really good. I would keybind it so you could target it and then just click it in your inventory if it wants to be on your current target. The last tip is more of a daily sadly and I know a lot of people don't like those but it's very good for Iron Man specifically because it allows you to get some penance powder every day or at least get the chance of getting penance powder. What I mean by this is these bushes in Hex Oasis when they're fully grown and you harvest them it gives you whatever the flower is. Then in addition to that, it has a chance of giving you a golden rose, which can be turned into penance powder. If you're a main account, this can be some good money every day, and then if you're an Iron Man, it can be penance powder every day. You can use rapid growth one time a day, so it will fully grow up one of these, so you can instantly harvest it instead of it taking like 10 minutes. In addition to this, if you have the Master Farmer outfit or the Tree Farmer outfit, you can go ahead and use rapid growth twice a day. It's on the Ancient Spellbook, and it is very, very useful. Sadly, I didn't get any Golden Roses, as it is a rare chance, but getting those every day could be a good source of money or Penance Powder on an Iron Man, and definitely worth it. And now be it for the tips and tricks today. Hopefully something in this video was useful to you, and if it was, please give the video a like, because it helps a lot, and subscribe for loads of other tips and tricks in the future. If you have any tips and tricks of your own, please comment them down in the comments down below, and if I haven't covered them already, I will add them to number 11. I definitely very much enjoy this series, so I'll be continuing it once again and hopefully helping people in the process. And as always, if you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute legend. Have a lovely day. And as always, until next time, see ya.